Alright. Alright, this is um I'm gonna make this two parts. Well I might have to make it three parts depending on how long this video go out into, but um I am continuing the maroons, alright, and how it relates to Nova Scotia as well as Sierra Leone. Alright, so boom. Where we left off in the last one, I was showing you that they sent let me just put you back on point where we was at. Uh, was it this one? This one. All right, boom. Here we go right here. We was at this part right here. All right, so we was at, we was reading when they had the wars. All right, so it said the governor went ahead against the vice, arresting several of the leaders of the, the Trinlini, the Trinlini town. This started the second Maroon War. 300 Maroons of the Trinlone town held out against 1,500 troops and 3,000 local volunteer troops. After five months of fighting, the undefeated Maroons were offered an agreement for peace. When they surrendered their arms, the governor cheated on the peace agreement offered. The Maroons were arrested and against the agreement they had accepted were transported off to the island of Nova Scotia. Okay, where is Nova Scotia at? Let me see. Let me see. It was right here. I think it was right here. Where's Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia is right here. Now let's go to the maps. Let's go ahead real quick. Just so I can just... just <sighs> Just put it out there. All right, so boom. Right, wait till it come on. All right, here we go. All right, so boom. So we see. All right, so boom. This is Nova Scotia. All right. So this would all implicate that these people came through this way because this is one of the regions that they inhabited all right so you know that they was already in this area right here but right here all right so now they're telling you that they took people from here back i guess i, I don't know how they did it but we'll have to see how the wars or was they still warring with Spain and Portugal at that time when they took these people back which i assume that maybe it was calming down around that time all right, but as you see, let's see how where's Sierra Leone? Right? Sierra Leone is somewhere in here, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't I don't see it up here, but I'm quite sure. Let me see if we go in. Let's see. All right, boom, there you go, right there. Little Sierra Leone, right there. So this is Sierra Leone. So now, I don't know, man. This is kind of weird because. From this story right here, from let me see, let me go back. All right, so from this story right here, it's saying that the Maroons was arrested, da 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 da. It's saying it was transported to the island of Nova Scotia. It's saying on the east coast of North America, and later went to Sierra Leone, West Africa. It say where Leonard Parkinson was one of the leaders of the Maroons. He was active in the Second Maroon War. Local authorities put a price on his head. They say one of him dead or alive. Parkinson pictured here what was known as the captain of the Maroons. Tony Town was the largest of the Maroon settlement in the island of Jamaica. This this image of Tony Town shows the British soldiers riding in to attack the town. They say the Maroons are surrounding them ready to resist and would beat them back. It say Maroons were known as skillful, tactful combat. It say where be they relied Oh sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um all right, it say where be they relied on their knowledge of surrounding environment to outwit their attackers. Alright, so how do Africans know? Now check this out. Alright, now just use your brain. So they went through the trouble to bring them from Africa, which they're not telling you where they came from in Africa. And when you read the etymology on it, the etymology tells you specifically.
the etymology tells you specifically it never says anything about these people coming from Africa. And this is just, like it says, it says, put ashore on desolate island or coast. It say earliest to be lost in the wild, 1690. So this is going all the way back, and we already read that. Let me see if it's this one. All right, so we already read early up in this one that it was telling you that the Maroons were escaped slaves. Which we already know that they was already bringing people there. Or, remember, alright, so the English wasn't bringing people there at first. So, you would, one would have to assume with either these was Africans that the Spanish were here, or they was already there. And the Spanish, because remember, the Spanish was enslaving the people of the land. That's why people think, that's why when you see, did I close that out? Let me see something. I don't think I closed it out. Uh, this one right here. All right, so is it this one? <sighs> I think it is this one. No, it wasn't this one. Okay. Uh, hold up, because I got a lot of stuff open. Let me try to find this. All right, here you go, right here, here you go, right here. All right, boom. So, I actually used this in two videos because I got another video showing you that the word Negro is only about, only existed from the 1500s, all right? So, it say, what about the African slave trade? All right, so it say, much of the so-called African slave trade was fabricated. There is no trade and independent source showing the so-called Indians on the eastern seaboard also called Terra Nova, all right? So now we got Nova Scotia and Terra Nova all here on this eastern seaboard. They say we're Moors. They say now, all right, he's saying it was Moors because of the complexion of the skin. They say it's a book. And also, remember, depending on who found them and what they describe these people as. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and I think that the word Negro means, the word Negro is a, is a denoting term. It means something of a person that's being captive. Because you only see that term applied to the people here. And then you you like like you don't see that term being applied nowhere else. Think, think of it like this, right? If think of it like this. The Portuguese and the Spain, their first time seeing Negroes was not. Now you know what? I can actually touch up on this all at the same time. Alright, so let me let me get let me go. So there was more than a book called African Native American. <clears throat> By Jack D. Falls, he shows in the book many of so-called Native American Indians were sold in slavery by Africans in Europe. All right, they say this is the opposite direction we was taught the slave trade went in. They say the Native Americans or Indians were classified as Negro. Now this is another person telling you that the slave trade went in, and before the video is out, and I'm gonna show you. All right, it say Terra Nova. Now here we go. Terra Nova show up in the slave market of Seville, Valencia, very soon after the 1500. For example, Valencia during the period 1500, we find. And now they got go with the names. We already went over these. Catalina, Miguel, such and such. It said they were classified as Negroes if we was brought to America around 1619 or even 1554. That matter, then how were they talking, taking slaves from newfound land to Europe? Keep in mind that one of the Native Americans even had the name Ali and was classified as a Negro once he re reached Yalencia. How did the Native Americans in 1550 have so called Moorish names? All right, so, you know, um, also, it said at least 3,000 American so-called Indians are known to be had shipped to Europe between 1493 and 1501. Columbus expedition with the likely total being possible double that. It said most were sent to Seville area where they seem to show up at the slave market as Negroes. They are a major contradiction to the whole slave trade myth. Say blacks were in America, the missing Indians are Negroes, the slaves sold in the slave market in the South were initially the black people from the right no, from right here in this hemisphere, as they took this land, they enslaved the inhabitants of those lands were black. Ten millions of American so-called Indians who disappeared from 1492 did not die in the Holocaust inflicted within America. Many thousands were sent to Europe as, I mean, in Africa as slaves. The whole slave trade myth is a whole story. No, no, I'm sorry. The whole slave trade myth 
is that the whole story was given to us in reverse. The math colony of Africans were shipped, not shipped from Africa to America, but the truth that black Indians were shipped from America to Europe. They were shipped, no, 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 I'm sorry. They were then shipped from Spain to Africa as a commodity. The African resource, these black Indians now mistaken as Africans, were shipped back to America and classified as African slave. The part of our history is what the school system has failed to mention in the history programs. All right? So, all right, I'm going to just go a little further, but this going to go into something else. All right? All right. Um, matter of fact, nah, y'all already get it. But it also relates to this. I'm going to go down. They say when Columbus returned to west of Haiti to South America in 1493. Now remember, the Spanish was already in the West Indies. So the West Indies is Jamaica. They was the island of Espanol. Look, if we go to the map. Let me see. We go to the map right here. All that shit right here. This is Jamaica, Cuba, the island of Espanol, Puerto Rico, and the rest of the islands. Bermuda, St. Croix, all this right here. This is Jamaica right here. So when the Spanish came here, they was all in this. They, that's the reason why the Spanish had Cuba. Okay, the Spanish had Cuba. They had all this all right here. And they gave the Portugal, I believe Puerto Rico, and um, Puerto Rico, and what's the name, and, and, um, Brazil. All right, so the Spanish was all the Spanish had all this, and I believe Portugal. I mean, I, it's a lot of other stuff that they could have had or whatever. But you got to really do the research on that, though. But nonetheless, though, yeah, that's how that's how I look at it. They was all. This is where the Portuguese was at, boom, and this is where the Spanish was at. So let me see where we was at. All right, so we was right here. All right, so it's showing you. So it say, Columbus kidnapped Arawaks. Now, who do we consider to be Arawaks? The people that's in that region we call Jamaica. So Arawak Indies, along with gold nugget, exotic birds, and grain. It say, Queen Isabella provided Columbus with 17 ships, 1,500 men, cannon, crossbow guns, and attack dog for the second voyage. Columbus' new mission was to conquer the West. When the Columbus returned to West, Haiti, the South America in 1493. He not only took raw materials and research, adopted women. After a short time, the Arawak resisted Columbus, and on March 25th, no, 1495, Columbus saw the thousand Arawak men. All right, so we already know. So it's telling you that the people we call Arawaks, if they look like Negroes, we already know that they were Negroes. All right? When you look at the Arawaks, then they're trying to just play with these words interchangeably. They weren't calling them. They was calling them Arawaks, but he's also calling them Negroes. So, um, all right, so we touched on that. So, let me see. So, back. Where was we at? All right, so... No, nah, not right here. Hold up. Before I go there. All right. So boom. So the Maroons was slaves that they 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 ran away from the Spanish owned plantations. Now they say when the British took the Caribbean island of Jamaica from Spain in 1655. So understand this, right? So what they will have you believe is when the British got there, the British bought with them slaves. But the British had their own people. Now, as you want to see, they already told you that they took people once the British got there. When the British got there, they they started warring and they took people from um, Jamaica to Nova Scotia because they already had ports set up there. They all of them was all in in the same order, all and all the ports that were set up was all from people coming from the European nation. So it's telling you that they took people from Jamaica to um, Nova Scotia and then they sent them to Sierra Leone. All right, so boom. So we're going to go with this right here. So now this is Wikipedia. We know people could change Wikipedia, but you can throw up, you can, you can hit this with anything. All right, you just need to guys an understanding of what happened. So the Jamaican Maroons in Sierra Leone was a group of about 600 Jamaicans, no, Jamaican Maroons from Tony Town, one of the five Maroon towns in Jamaica who were deported by British forces 
following the Second Maroon War in 1796 from Nova Scotia. Okay, Nova Scotia, we get soldier, is in Canada. Several years later, in 1800, they were transported to Sierra Leone. The Sierra Leone Company had established the settlement of Freetown and the colony of Sierra Leone in 1792 for the resentment of the African Americans who. Now, what happened to the people that was in that region? Okay. Because I don't, we don't even know, we don't know what the story of, of of that. Because how do you bring people and put people there at the same time? Now I say Nova Scotia say they have been excavated as free men for the from the United States after the American Revolution War. Some Jamaicans eventually returned to Jamaica, but most became a part of the larger Creole or Creole people and culture made up by freemen and liberal slaves who joined them in the first half century of the colony. For a long period, they um, dominated government and economy of what developed in Sierra, into Sierra Leone. So it tells you that some of them people came back. Now check this out. I'm going to keep on reading. All right. So it say following the rebellion, it say and the surrender of the colony government and the Second Maroon War, 1796, about 600 Jamaican Maroons from Tony Town was deported to Nova Scotia, tied to the cost of maintaining um, order. Maintaining order, uh, the Jamaican government had decided to rid themselves of the problem. Immediately, action were put in place for the removal of one group of Maroon colony, a lower Canada, Quebec, uh, Upper Canada, Ontario had also suggested as a suitable place the British decided to send this group to Halifax, say North Nova Scotia, until any further instruction. Now look, we see Halifax again, right? Let's check this out. Let me see. What the hell we was at, man? I got so much stuff up here. Ah, boy. So look, I was trying to find something, right? Let me see. Now look, you see this? This say Hello Flex. Hello Flex, alright? Now this is what the people look like. You see this? You see this? They got the same feather crown on. Now if you look at the if you look at the people in Jamaica, which I probably don't feel like pulling it up, they got pretty much the same thing on that the Aborigines had hit. Now, this is Halifax. Now, these are the people that they showing you that was in Halifax. These are Negroes. All right? These are the Maroons that they was talking about. Now, let me see something. I was trying to find. It's a picture I got of Nova Scotia. Uh, I was trying to find it, but I can't find it right now. But it's showing you where Nova Scotia was at in Canada. All right? So, let me go back to Wikipedia. Let me read a little bit more. All right. So... They say, all right, sent a group to Halifax, Nova, Nova Scotia, until further instruction were received from England. Two gentlemen, such and such, they were sent from Jamaica with the Maroons as commissioner. On on, 20, on June 26, 1796, the ship Dover, Mary, and Anne sailed from the Port Royal Harbor, Jamaica, to Halifax. Hold on, hold on, all right, from, to Jamaica to Halifax. Once arrived in Halifax on, 20, on the 21st, July. The other two followed two days later, carrying a total of fit of 568 men, women, and children. The Duke of Kent, the commander in chief of the British Army in the North America, impressed with the proud bearing of the of other characteristics of the Maroons, employed a group to work with the new fortification of the Chit the Chit 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 Hill in, in Halifax. All right, so it's telling you he re, reputed, he re, recruited some of the Maroons and some of the Maroons probably still live in that area that came from Jamaica that was transported to um, what we call Nova Scotia. Say the Lieutenant Governor Sir John Wentworth believed that the Maroons would be good settlers. He received orders from the Duke of Portland to settle them in Nova Scotia following the two commit to two. Now that's what they was doing. When they was warming one another, they they round you up and they take you to a different land and try to settle you there. It's a responsible with credit of two thousand no twenty five thousand Jamaican pounds. With the governor of Jamaica expounded 
um, 52 acres of land built in the community of Preston, Governor Wentworth was granted an allowance. All right, so these are people who all got money as a result of sending them. say, after the first win of the Maroons raised in independent culture and warmer climate and not impressive with uh, with their considered severe aspect of subsistence, agriculture became less tolerant of the condition in which they was living in. So, all right, so it say, the Sierra Leone company decided to send the Maroons to his new colony. So a new colony, all right, so it say Freetown, present day Sierra Leone, West Africa, which has been established for Nova Scotia settlers, the Maroon survivors in Nova Scotia was transported to Freetown in 18, 1800, the earlier years of the col uh, colonial, they say the final leg of the, the journey, alright, so boom, so you already see that, now look, now look, let's hear from their descendants, now check this out, let's hear from their descendants, boom, check this shit out, alright, see how all this shit just somehow correlates, right, so it's saying African Nova Scotian group seek reparation for slavery. All right, say so the Canadian government has not acknowledged what happened to us, says Lynn Jones, a global African Congress. All right, now she don't even know she's indigenous here. She thinks she's an African. All right, so it's say the the um coalition of African Nova Scotian group is urgent. Now, they, when they say African Nova Scotian group, now remember, these people originated in Jamaica and somehow they were sent to Nova Scotia and because they didn't like the climate there, they sent them to, they sent them to um, Sierra Leone. I right, say Nova Scotia group is urging the provenance of Canadian government to make reparations for blacks for an enslavement of the and that ain't even African people. Them was indigenous people who were sent there. Okay, them was indigenous people. And they trying to tell you, they don't tell you that they bought no slaves there because that's what, what, what they wasn't trying to do. They was taking the people who was who did, who wasn't getting along with what they was doing, they were sending them back to colonies that they already set up in other countries. Alright? And I just read that, I just showed you and this, whether you believe this is a, a credible source or not, you know what I'm saying? You got to further the research on this. But it tells you right here. It tells you right here. Let me see. All right. It tells you. So the missing Indians are Negroes. They slave. They sold. They no. The slave sold. The slave sold on the slave market in South was initially. The black people from right here in this hemisphere, as they took the land, they enslaved the inhabitants of those land who were black. The tens of millions of African of Americans, so-called Indians, who disappeared. So they say tens of millions, okay, tens of millions who disappeared after. I'm thinking that that whole coast in West Africa is fucking people from here, yo. I'm telling you, I'm thinking that whole coast of people, and if it's saying tens of millions, they were telling you, sending people to Sierra Leone. If you do the research, you'll find out how many more your um, England colonies do they have in Africa, and then you could do your research from there. When you find out how many England colonies they had in Africa, you find out when was these colonies established. You find out um, when was they bringing people from the Americas there, and you're gonna find out, yeah. So a lot of places in happening in Europe, like they said, they like you said, it said fourteen ninety two did not all die in the Holocaust inflicted within America. Many thousands were sent to Europe and Africa as slaves, the whole slave trade. All right, so we already know Europe and Africa. Okay, they were sending people to Europe and Africa as well as Spain. Okay? So let's get with this. All right, so it's say Lynn Jones. Now, her name is Jones. I believe she live in, in, in uh, Sierra Leone. It say the chair of Nova Scotia chapter of the International Governmental um, Network, Go Global Africa, African Congress, said her organization is seeking to address the crime against humanity that occurs to African people. Part, now, they saying it ain't African people is aboriginal. They say part of this... Part of the reparations, too, is to formally apologize for the Canada government generally has a knowledge, a knowledge what happened to us. She said, I think that is very much the first step. It's a Harvard research on um, Nova Scotia slavery as aimed to broaden understanding of history. It say the group has not yet determined 
how much it believed should be paid in reparation. Slavery was common in Nova Scotia in the 18th century. For instance, 400 of 3,000 people living in Halifax in 1750 were slaves. It's a New England planter who, who arrived in Nova Scotia. Now look, it's telling you where they got the people from. They got the people from Jamaica. The, 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 the Spanish never bought no Africans here. They enslaved the people of the land. Okay, and they telling you the Spanish, they took the shit from the Spanish in 16, they took it from the Spanish in 1650, 55. Now remember the Spanish was already there in 1492, so they was, they already was there for almost 100 and, 160 something years, if my math is correct. Alright, so, um... It said 18, say for Halifax. And I said, I just showed you. It said living in Halifax. Now, look, I just showed you what they showed you what the people in Halifax look like. This, These are the people that they say. These are what they telling you the people in Halifax look like. All right? This is what they telling you. Now, this is like coarse hair. These look like Negroes. Okay? These look like Negroes. All right? So... It say New England planters say who arrived in Nova Scotia between 1759 and 1765 bought with them hundreds of slaves. They bought with them hundreds of slaves from Jamaica, and them people was already there. It say the Congress has asked federal MP to take its plea for reparation to Ottawa. It say it has also met locally with um, African Nova Scotians affair minister Tony Inch. It say Inch was not available for interview. However, he said in an email that these are complex provit prov prov Whatever, man, I can't get that word out right now. National, inter I mean, national and international issues that all levels of government and community need to discuss. Outside of the monetary claim, Jones said there are other types of reparations that could be considered by the community, such as education from people who are screened into general, general courses. She said, so it may look like doing something about... No, no, I'm sorry. Let me get that correct. All right. So it says it may look like doing something about furthering people education. It may mean that we ask for economical resources, housing, because we haven't had proper housing or the ability to obtain housing or property. And I say forgotten settlement of enslaved, I mean, in, in escape, escaped slaves. It's not, they say escaped slaves. They talk about some of the maroon. They say a piece of Nova Scotia heritage. All right, so whatever the acronym is, U-N-E-S-C-O, describes the transatlantic slave trade as the biggest deportation in the history. Now, they're the, the, they telling you the biggest deportation in the history because they're telling you they took people from here. Okay, it say the United Nations against an estimate between 25 to 30 million people were was torn from their homes, deported from North America, and sold as slaves. Now check that shit out. Now listen to that. Listen to what they just said. Now look, it said the UNESCO describes the transatlantic slave trade as the biggest deportation in history. Now look, check this out. Let's look up what the word deportation means. So. I mean, D means under, portation means to be tr um, tr um, transported. Now, look, check it out. Let's see. All right, computer, come on, let's get this shit done. All right, so it's say deport. Let me see. It say behave. It say I. Right, so it say to behave. Now listen to this shit, y'all. Check this out. Deport. Late 15th century. To behave. From old French deporters. Behave. Deport. Also a wide range of meanings of uh, old French, such as be patient, take one, sexual pleasant, say amuse, entertainment, remain, delay, console. All right, but look, we're going to look at this word behave, okay? Deport. Banish. It say carry off, transport, banish, exile from D. It say in its sense of, off, away, partake, to carry. It say so if they're telling you right here, see they're telling you right here in their own fucking sense. It's saying the transatlantic slave trade is the biggest deportation in history. Now what did we read right here? What did we read when we was right here? 
What did we read right here? Now, they told you it was millions. They telling you right here it was tens of millions of American Indians who disappeared after 1492. Million, and let's say many thousands. <laughs> they just told you 25 million, okay, was deported. So they didn't say deported from Africa. They said deported from America. So they already slipped up. They slipped up in that article, okay? So we're sent to Europe and Africa. All right, so boom. So, all right, so it says... 25 to 30 million people was torn from their home, deported to North, deported to North America, at, and so at slave. Now they saying deported to North America, and saying so that slave. Say many died aboard the ship. Now check this out. These people, all right. So this is what they saying. So, okay, they they brought Africans here, okay, took them to the Caribbean. But the people, they don't know where them people came from in the Caribbean because they didn't say that they brought nobody there. They said that the people was already there because they was already away from the Spanish. When when the English took over the land, they came in contact with them. They started warring with them again. They don't know where they're from because they didn't bring them there. They didn't bring them there. Obviously, anybody who's reading this will know they obviously didn't bring them there. If they said, look, check this out. So, according to one who used their brain, it say the more maroons were, ex were escaped slaves. They ran away from their Spanish own plantations okay when the british took the caribbean island of jamaica from the spain the word maroon come from the spanish word seminal it say which meet with met uh, mountain it say they fled to the mountainous areas of jamaica where it was difficult for their owners to follow and catch them and form independent communities as free men and women okay so now they're going to tell you as it say as more slaves were imported from Africa, no. They was bringing the Indians from Nova Scotia and the different parts of the coast to the Caribbean. So we already can prove that. We already can prove that. How can we prove that? Let's prove it right here. Check this out. Real quick. Real quick, all right, and go back into the research again. All right, so let's go all the way down to 1634, 1621, around that time. All right. Now remember, and remember, this say 1611. Say this is something though. Say former Dutch lawyer Block explored you no know, explored mountain. I mean, I'm sorry, Manhattan Island. It's saying the ship Tiger said he returned. All right, so Dutch. So remember, we know the Dutch was in. So when they saying that the Dutch, they say kidnapped two Indians. All right, so this dealing with when we was talking about um this going to take me into something else. I'm I need to keep that in mind right there cuz that's going to show me that the people that was in Manhattan, the people that was buried under Wall Street was already indigenous people there. All right, so that's my next video. All right. So, boom. We going 1621, go to 1637. It said the colony of Massachusetts, the Pequot where Massachusetts is close to. Let's see. Hold up. Where Nova Scotia at? Bam! Nova Scotia right here, right? So when they came in, they didn't have the same people. They was one with them, and they were sending them out to different places, right? Maine, <clears throat> Massachusetts is right here. All this shit right here is the same, all right? So if it's telling you right here that it says... The Pinqua Indians were the first slaves, but as they were not in daughter yoke, they were sent to Bermuda in exchange for Negroes and hoped that they would later bear slavery more patiently. It say the first exchange of Indians for Negroes were made in 1637 and the first year of the Pinqua War was doubtfully kept 
up for many years. All right, so it tells you. It says masks, whatever. All right, so we already read through a lot of that. But it's already telling you. Now, they're telling you in this time right here, before they got this 1655, before they conquered it, they was already sending people because they was working their way in. We know. Let me see something again. Where they, where they say they sent them that? To Bermuda, all right? So look. Bermuda. Right. Bahamas, Bermuda is, I believe, down here. Hold on, you know what? I think I might have been wrong. Let me see something. I'm, I'm bugging. Oh, all right. Bermuda's. Bermuda's, all right. So, it, so let me see. So, the Bermuda, Bermuda is right here. It was this. We can't even see it right now, but it's right there. Let me set up a bit. Oh, I can't find. Let me see. St. George. See, look. Look, Bermuda's in the middle of no fucking way. Alright? I guess that was the first island that they had. Because if you move it up, let me see. Damn, my fucking computer is bugging. Well, y'all can look it up for yourself. Man. It's not showing the rest of the islands for some reason. Computer's not working properly. Alright, but you can see. This is Virginia Beach. And this is Bermuda. Bermuda's out from here. So I guess they was already somehow coming out there somehow. They was coming because I guess that they had the Spanish somehow trapped. I guess once they came there, they had all this stuff around here pretty much trapped once they set up shop there. All right, so we already see that. We know that. We know that they was already bringing people from them islands and they're not telling you that the pink quad was slaves i mean or the pink quad was africans and we already know what the pink quads look like today so come on now it's just it's just a big it's just a, a big um like it, it's it's very uh, it's very misunderstood if you don't know how to do the um the history all right so now look it says Come on, 